Instant Pot. I never know whether it's Instapot or Instant Pot. I like to call it Instapot. Oh, lights. Anyways, had some beets, uh, chickpeas, fried eggplant. I've been very experimental with vegetables lately. It's very tasty. I feel like it's all over me now. Eggplants, not eggplants, beets just dye everything. Everything they touch is just that color forever. Grab my notebook. I mean, continuing on my culinary journey and as I progress I have special places for things so I have my what used to be my cupboard of things I never used or looked at now has functional things like my drawing notebook and last but not least I can check in on the Twitters I believe we had some game ideas that we were talking about Mm -mm. <laughs> just looking at my twitter mentions here there's people on fire crossfire gifts just all sorts of fun stuff name concepts so let's see what people seem to have on the brain looks like some stuff in relation to a question and answer sort of a thing seems fun we're talking about oh yeah uh game biology is talking about unusual pair-ups as a thematic design decision with the example of coyotes and badgers oh, get my thing over here Touch that today is the fourth just like to take some notes here at the beginning of the stream figure out what we're going to want to talk about and then come up with some game ideas. Uh, let's just say question answer games for now. Of course we don't have to go in either of these directions. We can start completely fresh. Just throwing some things out there and seeing what sticks. <laughs> game about this says Instapot sounds very sci-fi. I don't know. I swear, somebody said Instapot, or I read it somewhere. Because every time I Google it, it's an Instapot, I mean Instant Pot. It's, but Instapot just sounds so much better, right? I feel like that's a missed opportunity. I don't know how that got in my head, but... <laughs> Instapot. Instapot, right? Am I the only one who wants to call it the Instapot? Instant Pot is just like, bleh. It's a mouthful. Uh, the better naming game. Better names for better things. <laughs> Instant Pot sounds like a magical artifact acquired on a quest. I agree. Instant Pot equals Star Trek Replicator. I wish. Just press a button on there. Fried chicken. Although I would probably eat fried chicken. Is that beets or blood? It's hard to tell. I think it's beets. If I had a replicator, I would probably just press that fried chicken button over and over again. Man. I don't remember too accurately. I don't remember. If, did they used to show that much food? I watched a lot of Star Trek Next Generation when I was younger. But I don't remember a lot of the food. I remember the Earl Grey tea, hot, of course. Uh, the kinds of things that they would eat. Because I, I feel in the Star Trek universe, it would be very measured, very reasonable. You'd have your broccoli and your broiled chicken there with some wild rice. Uh, but for me, it would be much more fifth element... Lilu microwave scene where it's just roast chicken, fried chicken, uh, huevos rancheros, chili relleno, you know, just like I would not fare well health wise on the Star Starship Enterprise. 
Came out and says, Instant Pot could also be the delivery service for your local marijuana dispensary. Ooh, I like that, yeah. Maybe we'll just make a bunch of different game ideas based on the Instant Pot. That could be fun. Replicators can only create something one time, unless you get a hacked one. Really? I don't remember that. Email just says, I remember that, uh, when they had Whoopi Goldberg on TNG with their bar restaurant on the ship. There was a lot more food and drink showing up in the episodes. Yeah, I remember that too. Oh, Whoopi Goldberg. Such a treasure. The year of the instant pot, or the day of the instant pot. Inst I just can't. Ugh. Instant pot. It's too many consonants. Uh, so you do a food replication game. <laughs> Marijuana delivery service game. Interesting research note. I wonder how many marijuana board games have been created. Uh, I know there's Stoner Parking Lot. <laughs> Six marijuana board games that make real life worth living. Pop form. Stoner Flux. <laughs> that does not surprise me at all. Looney Labs. Ugh, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Stoner Flux. That's fabulous. Game of Zonk. <laughs> Roll to see who gets to 10,000 points first and smoke a lot of weed. Lords of Cannabis. Wow. There are weedopoly. There's a surprising number of marijuana board games. Uh, I realize this might be a taboo subject for some people. It is legal in Washington, so I feel comfortable talking about it. Um, if anyone does not, just feel free to let me know. <laughs> Ooh. Instant pot for planting flowers. We do a gardening game. Do, 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 do. Food replication. Uh, gardening. interesting I do want to do something guard he could coming back to like plants nature vegetables banana all our jokes uh, guardian game you plant mystery seeds that instantly turn into a cool plant like I have my uh, space biology game mm. Space botany, that's what it is. So many different game concepts rattling around my brain. Yeah, this game about better names for existing products. I think fun, simple party game. What are the mechanics of that would be? You don't have to focus on one idea. We can keep brainstorming. Right. Gonna draw my instant pot. Dude, it's got a couple handles. It's got the scary lid with the steam valve that I'm always afraid is going to cut through something. Okay. So sidebar, story time. When I was younger, I swear it was like the janitor or something in high school, had this story about, I wonder, maybe it was one of my friend's parents, working in some sort of factory manufacturing setting and walking around uh, and hyper powered steam, it's invisible, you can't see it, and they were walking, this is gonna be grim, so if you are easily startled. Uh, earmuffs. 
uh, walking around through this factory setting, hyper powered steam, invisible, and you walk through it and you get cut in half. I don't know if that's a real thing, but I swear, somebody told me that story and I've been terrified of steam ever since. Just the raw power of steam. I mean, I know much more likely it's just gonna burn you. You have really bad burns from it, but it's been very stressful for me learning to use the Instapot because of that. <laughs> Dangers of hyper-powered steam. I should send a vi I should post a video sometime of me using the Instapot and releasing the pressure from it. Cause I have the baking gloves on. Uh, or the oven mitts on and I have the um, squeezy the tongs and I'm standing back here like this and reaching out and just pressing very judiciously on the valve for the quick release but I think I'm, I'm getting better at it there's a, there's a technique to it if you do it just gently then everything tends to work out pretty well also make sure there's nothing directly above it um, like the count cabinets and Bad stuff can happen, but yeah. Hyper powered steam. Instant pot. I feel like there aren't enough instant pot themed games. I feel like there aren't enough cooking games in general. Uh, so that could be food replication, marijuana, gardening, better names for existing products, dangers of hyperpowered steam, uh, just cooking recipes in an instant pot. Uh, instant pot's a per fairly well-known brand too, right? Yeah, I don't think there's any games about it. It'd be a good pitch for the instant pot company. I don't know if that's just their brand. Instant Pot Company. <laughs> Pitch and be like, hey, how about a board game that's about Instant Pots? Yeah, it's just Instant Pot. Oh, Instant Brands. Okay. Uh, this could be a fun recipe fulfillment game. Put in ingredients. Uh, Maybe sometimes something weird happens. So a lot of recipe fulfillment games are, you'll see the card, it will tell you the ingredients, collect the ingredients in some way, and then fulfill them. Oh my gosh, yes, you could have a really cool uh, mini uh, like toy instant pot component that you put stuff in. Like that frying pan game. I'm sure they could figure out a toy version of that. That'd be sweet. Or maybe it'd be easier just to have like a little plastic one. You don't put stuff in it. It wouldn't be as fun. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so a lot of recipe fulfillment. See the recipe, get the ingredients, do it. There's not a lot of surprise there. Uh, but having something... Hmm. So for a double-sided card, uh, ingredients on one side, then you find out what the recipe is, you could potentially memorize that stuff, so mix and match. Um, you don't know what you're going to get when you put your ingredients together. Sometimes there's an oops. <laughs> Think you make an alien. Uh, I like the humor element of that. Okay. I was thinking about better naming of thing. Find a better name for toaster. Hmm. I think it was on stream last week that we talked about the Upgoer 5, right? I think I still have the tab open, although I've been working to be better at closing my tabs. Today it's gotten a little crazy. 
Uh, up go our five text editor. So maybe maybe we could do it in like a up go our five app game or something. A toast. Heat bread, real good. Man, heat bread. <laughs> Flour? Huh. Wheat? Grain? Man, this is up to our five. <laughs> Cook. Okay, never mind. I can't do this up to our five. Things really hard. Cook grain real good. Until dark. I'm gonna play around with that. It's harder than you think. I've heard of leaking hydraulic fluid shooting through someone's hand. Dang. That's crazy. Kimo says pressure cookers can be scary, right? I'm not the only one. My folks used one for canning and making barbecue ribs when I was a kid. There's a general stay away from the pot while it's going because there wouldn't be an accident. Yeah. Explosion, just the amount, just pressure in general. Pressure is generally an intense and scary thing. <laughs> Instapots for modern witches. Ooh, I like that as a cooking theme. Uh, throw cooking meets quacks. The Quacks of Quedlamer game. <laughs> Instant Pot versus Hot Air Fryer. I've heard mixed things about hot air fryers. I mean, I've heard they're amazing and people swear by them, but then when I research more into it, it seems like they're not as good as they were promised to be. So I've never used one before. I don't know what the truth is. Got to have an easy bake oven style game prop that actually cooks things. Oh my gosh. That's a game in and of itself. Actually getting an uh, easy bake oven to work. Wow. Yeah, that's. <laughs> it's so fun. I remember because I had an easy bake oven. And. It cooks things with a light bulb. It would take forever. I feel like it would take a lot longer. It would take an hour and a half or two hours for this little tiny cookie thing to not even be cooked all the way through. It's very stressful. And I was, I don't know if I was a precocious kid or what, but I was cooking things in the kitchen with my mom at a very young age. So I knew uh, in the oven or even in the, in the cook stove, cooking things with fire uh, or over the campfire right cooking hot dogs from very very young age and to me even as a five six year old with easy bake oven i was like this is dumb i'm just gonna put stuff in the hot one and cook 50 cookies in 12 minutes instead of one cookie in two hours mm, game out says pitched an upgore five based team building exercise to the boss last week so that's on my to-do list now fun. Yeah, I haven't actually gotten to play around with the site much since last week, but uh, it's fun. You should all check it out if you haven't gotten a chance to yet because it's harder than you think <laughs> coming up with stuff. I was just trying to do toast real quick and it's like how do you even communicate bread? Like bread, wheat, grain, flat, I, I don't think you can use slice. Flat food. <laughs> Dry flat food. I wonder if that would work. <laughs> Toast. Dry dark flat food. Flat doesn't work. <laughs> Dry dark food. Um, yeah, it's fine. I can't be distracted by it now because I'm streaming, but definitely feel an urge to play around with it. <laughs> cool. We're jumping right in here with the game design ideas. If you're new to the stream, this is pretty much what we do. Brainstorm ideas that would work for board games or other types of game design if that's what you're into. 
talk about the ideas, flesh them out a little bit, and I'll kind of chip in and see the fun game ideas that we can come up with. So we got one, witches, modern witches. I keep coming back to that article we had discussed a few weeks ago where a lot of the components for traditional witches potions like eye of newt wing of bat were herbs so we think of it in our modern times and you know probably after christianity got a hold of it and kind of tried to erase the pagan herbal natural medicine roots uh, of a lot of different religions this translated into um, just start to make it look bad, right? Like, oh, these witches, they were, use, they were cutting up animals and using them. It's like, well, actually, all of those were plants that they would use to make medicinal potions. <laughs> also really like the idea of witches just cooking tasty meals and an occasional spell, or Baking witch. Your spells are cooked into delicious dishes. Is that a thing? Oh my gosh, I want that to be a thing now. Cooking witch. Baking witch. Witchcraft. Because making potions is like cooking, making potions, you mix the ingredients together. What if you're making delicious foods that just happen to have magical properties? Mm. Not saying that because I might still be hungry after eating my breakfast. And I'm still a little hungry. I mean, I'll just wait for it to digest. A spellbinding guide to cooking like a witch. Kitchen witchery. Kitchen witchery. I just love the way that that sounds. Food magic for witches. Food magic, yes. I feel like there's something here. Food magic, the game. That could be the name of the game. That's a good name, right? Food magic. I'm just going off here. If anyone else, if I'm going off the rails or anyone else has other ideas, feel free, feel free to chip in and stop me from my craziness. <laughs> Being careful of saying baking witch. <laughs> Too fast. Baking witch. Baking witch. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I see. I see what you did there. See where you're going with that. Mm. A game about that just has a fun pitch to it too. <laughs> I don't know how to do pitch first design. If I was to pitch this to a publisher or to a player, how would I describe it to that person? What is the feeling that I'm trying to capture? game where you whip up delicious delicacies with surprising side effects. Toad, I can't spell toad. Toad food tofu. Turns you into a toad. <laughs> Just toad food. Uh, what would some other recipe? We don't have to come up with all the content now. Like, what would other magical, Just like uh, love cakes? I don't know what this would be. Just love and cake. 
I have brownies in my fridge too, so I'm just thinking about that. Oh, I really want a brownie right now. Brownies, why are you hiding from me? So mechanically, I feel like you can do some fun stuff with this sort of um, recipe fulfillment game. Uncertain variable outcome recipe fulfillment game fulfillment. So you'd want some sort of a tuned or modulated randomness for this, I feel like. Or for the memorization thing, because I don't want it to get into a thing where, oh, I know that the eye of newt and sugar and eggs turns into this type of a cookie. You could have a few cards uh, with the same ingredients on them. So what are the different ways that we could do this mechanically? Uh, you could have ingredients, one, two, three goes to a deck <laughs> of outcomes. So it's 100% random. So you fulfill a list of ingredients and you get a completely random recipe. Which is interesting. I think thematically, if you have a little bit more control over it. Uh, I think that would be good to have where you have a little bit of knowledge or control over what is going to happen when you mix together these recipes. Yeah, a lot of ideas like this, if you doing it digitally, would be super easy not having to maintain and track all sorts of different markets and piles of cards you would just write a script to say oh here's for this organization of ingredients here's the three possible recipes it could turn into for this these five ingredients could turn to four different recipes uh, diagram that out a little bit for kind of the feel that we're going for and then think about the ways that we can simplify it to make it work physically in paper. <laughs> Gimelda says, I give you toast. I imagine this is using the upgoer five. Uh, I'm excited to see what this, what it came out as. <laughs> to make this, take the almost babies of green living things, almost babies, that must be seeds, and make them into small, small pieces. <laughs> Add small living things that make air and some water. Use fire on this to make it something to eat. Then use fire again to put butter on it. Oh, that is really good. I love that. I feel there's very much up go or five game. What am I, what am I describing? You could maybe do that in paper. Just do, okay, game biologist, here's an idea. Just do this for 200 different things, and then people have to use them to guess. It feels a little bit uh, monikers-esque, where you have limited information, and you have to try and communicate with uh, single word or just motions. Sort of amazed that butter is more commonly wor used word than plant. Hmm. I guess so. I mean, plant. Yeah, I've used the word butter multiple times. 
in the last couple couple of days and plants I don't believe that I've used once. Uh, but also I'm sure it's very cultural too, very dependent on the cultures. Butter apparently is very delicious. I mean, I say butter's delicious. Well known food uh, in the U.S. I'm sort of amazed. <laughs> what if ingredients are symbolic, represent words or concepts? Ooh. The order and combination ends up reading as an incantation. Borderline cryptography. Storytelling. I like having a storytelling element to it. That's cool. Add this to our list of notes. Hmm. Yeah. I love the... Cause where mine's go my mind is going with as a card, often card focused designers, how I'm going to make this into different cards and the cards read, cards map onto different cards, this diagram of how everything combines together, how I'm going to simplify this so that setup isn't crazy and intense. Maybe it doesn't have to be that complex. Um, but yeah, imagine you had a number of Recipes? I'll just say this is the recipes. And each one can become multiple final product. I guess baked good, whatever. Two, three, four. Let's go with two things. <laughs> Actually, no, this is good. Diagramming it out it does make me think of a potential way to have a system like this even be fairly mechanical. It made me feel a little quax esque. Before setup, like maybe not too crazy. We have our, again, a number of decks. Don't get too caught up on deck sizes, card counts, anything like that, because it's all subject to change. These are decks. Uh, deck composition is ingredient uh, card on top. So this goes here, and then under that you have uh, face down dishes, a finished product. Yes, you have a, a deck, basically, and you could have any number here, 10, whatever, you can mix them up, and they could be in different categories. Um, could be traditional men menu categories, apps, desserts, pasta. So it could be culinary categories or spell-based categories. Let me do the notes over here. Categories, culinary, apps, desserts, deserts, pasta, etc. or Spell based for types of spells. What would that be called if we we're doing categories? I mean, I think there's. Oh, in Harry Potter. Counter jinxes, counter curses, counter charms. I don't think I want the Harry Potter ones. Wiccan spells come in many types. This is very useful. 
inner and outer magic, white and black magic, banishing, binding, freezer, sweetening, love spells, wealth and money, career spells. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so it turns out there's a lot of ways to categorize spells. We're learning a lot of stuff today. I hope that this is useful information for you going forth in your game design career. Uh, so you can categorize based on a type of magic, conjuration, ch chance, invocation, uh... Yeah, this is a little like the D and D esque stuff, uh, or effects of magic, all in love, transformation spells, or uh, class or ingredient. So you can classify the elements, types of plants, phases of the moon, even. There's a lot of fun stuff. That's why I like the idea of Wiccan, witchcraft, elements. I think there's nature, druidic. There's a lot of fun stuff there you can really dig into and give something a lot of flavor. Um, so, for example, we talk about having our different decks of cards. Move that so everyone can see. Um, so each deck of recipe results. I need a good term for that. Could have one key ingredient. And you can do like the eye of newt and stuff, but actual herb based. It might be a little confusing for people because mm, I don't know. It could be fun educationally. You have a picture of an eye of newt and then you look at it and say, well, that's a plant, and having it to be explained, kind of a lot of degrees of separation. Uh, could be traditional herbs like comfrey, um, black sea salt, rose petals. There's a lot of different directions, a lot of fun potential flavors in there. <laughs> the idea is sort of what would it look like if witches had a language of ingredients the way that sweethearts used to have a language of flowers hmm. I'm going in a different direction that with the decks and stuff um, okay what do you This doesn't even have to be in the Instapot. I realize we've gotten a little bit away from the Instapot theme, but that's good. It's great. We're brainstorming. Cooking magical food as witches. Uh, so this is more mechanical recipe fulfillment. I'm gonna separate this out so these don't get lost together. Okay, I'm gonna two. Witches cook ingredients using a using their secret ingredient language. Uh, and I like the thing about lovers and the language of flowers uh, which is really cool in Tussie Mussie if you haven't seen that Elizabeth Hargrave's game 
they she talks about the languages of the flowers i seem to remember on the cards it actually says but there's a lot of them it, i mean think about the average person and how much they know about flower language i could guess and say red roses are for passionate love and daffodils are for friendship I don't know too much about it, but there's a rich language here. I think it's a really cool thing to play off of and create your own language. Flower language. <laughs> language of flowers with their meanings. Holy. Sorry, um, there's a lot. Is this an accurate site? There's like 50 on here. Seems like a lot. Go to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is definitely the source of totally accurate source of information. How about aggiehorticulture.tamu.edu? This is an educational site. Sure, well, we'll take that link. I also just love the idea of using the flower language, being fluid, fluent, fluid, fluent in the flower language, that this was something that happened into the day to day. I haven't done too much research in it, so I don't know exactly how serious it was, you know, if someone wrote a book about it and it was kind of haha, -ha, or if people were very much into it, which I kind of think is the case. Because I feel like I've heard about movies or shows or things where you send them a flower, it's kind of like sending the horse's head and the godfather, right? You send the flower and it's these subtle jabs of like oh i think about you as a uh, older relative like a spinster aunt you know sending that to one of your young rivals because i know so much of that era probably the victorian era i don't know most things seem like they were the victorian era was about this uh subtle social jock jockeying and that's that's what they had like it was so important for them because that was their life if for the people the nobles right who didn't have a lot of they had a lot of time on their hands because they weren't working to make a living they were just kind of going to balls making networks relationships with people rising and falling in favor with the intrigue and in this sort of a social situation something subtle like flowers could develop this whole crazy weight to it so we're talking about the theme for this game if witches were making a language based on the ingredients and that's sweet sweethearts too to be fair game biologist said for sweethearts, for friends, like the, um, for courting, right? This is, I'm interested in you. I just think of you as a friend. Um, so depending on who the context, right? Who you're sending the flowers to, there can be a lot of different meanings. For witches, could be the same thing, right? Jockeying for position within the witch, witches circle. But I kind of like the idea of it being more something different than that. Although now I also want to make a jockeying for social standing. For social standing, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> a game about using flowers to jockey for social standing. Flowers to jockey. Maybe you could even play it with the Tussie Mussie cards. Just 
get two copies of Tussie Mussie and you have your 36 co flower cards there you can do stuff with. Could you communicate? Teach, learn, spells, protect each other. Evade threats, fight evil, heal, protect. A little fun stuff there. <laughs> different flower types of different meanings. Uh, yeah, pussy mussy, absolutely. I've new is actually a plant ingredient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this another? Oh, cool. This is another article. I like that this is how stuff works. Great. Like I definitely want to read into that because I had seen on just a personal site people talking about the history. Like it feels have a little bit more weight to it. <laughs> so you just hope that the mob doesn't send you lilies. Is that a real thing? I don't know. Apparently in the south there are lucky foods to eat on New Year's that symbolize different things like uh, black eyed peas, right? I mean, just as a general cultural thing, different regions, different countries, talking about luck and health and happiness. Um, feng Shui, for example, I was the I don't remember, um, Neko, Monoke Neko, is that it? Neko, Mononoke, okay, Mononoke Neko. That's always what I think it is. Right? Hmm. The good luck cats. <laughs> the good luck cats you have in different regions. Meneki. Oh, okay. Meneki Neko. I can't remember how to pronounce it. Meneki Neko. So they have different ones for, uh, my original understanding was that you would have the Meneki Neko as the cat with the one raised paw, gold for symbolizing wealth and bringing fortune, but as I started to research and bought some for the house, there's different ones that symbolize health, warding off bad spirits. This is a lot of fun. Uh, different colors of cats. Man, having a Maneki Neko game, that'd be super cool. Oh, too many ideas. <laughs> Maneki Neko Games. I think there's a whole company. Hmm. Cool. Uh, foods or items that bring luck. Maybe it's just a game about luck. Using all sorts of different cultural methods. You have to be careful about appropriation there. Um, or keep it in a culture, like practices used within the US, for example. <laughs> Win by being the luckiest person. It's like, I have my three Maneki Nekos and my six rabbit's feet and my horseshoes and all these different things and I ate black eyed peas on New Year's. I have maximum luckage. Hmm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. His knees. Uh, okay, I'm done. Hmm. 
Hmm, assembling a story of ingredients to solve problems that villagers bring you. I mean, that's a great pitch. We're talking about pitch first design, how you how you would describe a game to someone. I would play that game. Assemble a story of ingredients to solve problems. Uh, you and your fellow witches. The rest of your coven. Must assemble a story of ingredients to solve the problems. Just like all of our chickens keep disappearing. You have to put the pieces together to tell a story about this. <laughs> oh man. Reminds me of Willy Wonka adding tennis shoes to your recipe to give it some kick. Puns? Puns are great. I love that. Just throw, throw a pun on it. Just pun it up. Puns. <laughs> nice. Cool. I love how the ideas tend to morph and shift and grow over time. Start with Instapots, even when we don't necessarily do the traditional mind mapping, brainstorming. Instapots, cooking, throwing things into the Instant Pot, which is making recipes, which is having a secret language, uh, things bringing you luck making a game about luck collection. <laughs> I like that I knew that as a mechanic. That luck collection, like set collection, but luck collection. Hmm. There was a game made in 1943 called Luck. The kind of things that you find on BGG. Also, just feng shui in general. Really like to make or play a feng shui game. I think I've looked this up before. Oh, yeah, I remember I looked it up uh, a week or two ago. And it ended up, there is a game called Feng Shui, but it's specifically a combat fighting game, which seems like a missed opportunity, because if I was making a game called Feng Shui, it would be about laying out your home uh, in the perfect orientation. So you would collect a water fountain and you would put it in a certain location and that would help with your wealth. See, it's an interesting conundrum because I don't feel like enough of an expert to make a feng shui game. I could find a feng shui expert and partner with them to make a game. Uh, I would definitely want to do that. I could make a game, like make up a system that's like feng shui, like a more breaking it down into what excites me about it. Say it's a game about placing certain items in your space to get side effects, but I don't want to rip off the cultural system of feng shui. Say like, oh, you know, it's, it's a knockoff of feng shui. It's just instead of a fountain meaning this, it means this. So in order to use it as an inspiration and not just steal from that culture, it has to have enough degrees of separation. So a game about placing certain items, maybe it's an abstract game. And I was inspired by feng shui, but everything is reduced to symbols. 
or maybe you're on a spaceship and you're trying to put alien plants. I'm just gonna write that down because it's bizarre. Uh, to create symbols that will provide a certain effect. <laughs> Maybe you're hurting, you're organizing slash hurting cats into certain formations. <laughs> this is what I love about brainstorming. You know, just like talking, not really thinking too much, just uh, stream of consciousness. Like, what is the term for that? Stream of consciousness saying the first thing that comes to mind and all of a sudden you're hurting cats into certain formations for reasons. <laughs> this is the game. It's actually kind of funny. I, I like the, the thought of that where you, you have your... I'm just gonna draw like a... curled up cat. Curled up cats don't make sense for the, the movement. You just have your cat tokens and they're all over the, the grid, for example. And you're trying to organize the tokens on the board into a certain pattern, but they keep moving from random effect or another player can move them. So it's come to this. Herding cats, the board game. <laughs> but they work against your wishes. They have to do it in an interesting way, right? Programmed into the game, changes over time. Sounds thematic for herding cats. If you push an animal right, it goes hard to east and west. West, it goes north instead. I don't know exactly what it would look like, but some sort of cause and effect thing. Puzzly seems like it would be puzzly. Puzzly. I could see another player working against you, like one player. Places the cats. You don't get, you wouldn't get to choose most of the time where you go because you want to simulate the precocious, uh, not precocious, uh, the varying, uh, vacillating. interests of the cats. That would be kind of funny. Uh, asymmetrical, two-player, abstract game. Can choose exactly what they want to do. do it, other player needs to stop the formation from happening, but they have limited control. Because if you had perfect control, you just someone to push, you'd push back. If someone's trying to accomplish a thing and you're trying to fight against them, but if the cat player 
Uh, could be a programming game. Sorry, just thinking of it. The cat player had limited actions that they could do. Makes me think a little bit of Jurassic Park Danger. Where the T-Rex has only like three or two cards at a time. A limited number of things that they could do. So they might end up doing something silly. Because uh, they just don't have that many options. Programming, hand management. Cat player has limited cards to move or thwart. <laughs> I love them coming up with cooking games, instant pot, witches, and the one that I get most excited that I got most excited about today so far is this herding cats game. <laughs> Herding cats ban. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm, so there is a game called Herding Cats. Uh, it's a kids game. Definitely looks like it's different than what I'm thinking of. I don't know if I could call it herding cats 2012 okay maybe, maybe it's within the statute of limitation i don't even know what's going in chat because i've just been off in my own little world <laughs> alien plants again yes space botany is going to happen one of these days different plants have to be in close proximity to exchange pollen and create hybrid plant seeds Ooh. It's actually relevant for my space botany game. I'm gonna write that down. Write that down, good ideas. Many different plants like different types of music and you try to arrange them near different music sources. I like that too. I like that you're just running with the plants thing. Uh, it makes me think of the dancing plant which is brought back, of course, by Guardians of the Galaxy, the dancing Groot plant. <laughs> and now you can buy it again, which is so hilarious. I remember that from, what was it, the 80s or 90s? Original mechanical dancing plant. Because it would dance when you played music. I feel like it was some crazy technology for back in the day. Original dancing plant. Oh. What? There's an actual dancing plant? Desmodium gyrans is also known as Coderial Calix Motorius, but both Latin names are still used. Telegraph plant is recently also been called the dancing plant. California carnivores. Ooh. The dancing plant that's a carnivorous plant? That's cool. <laughs> carnivorous dancing plants. See, I don't know if, uh, if anyone has the trouble of not having enough ideas or themes to design games around. But if you ever do, just start falling down one of these Google Wikipedia rabbit holes and you will find more ideas and more themes than you can shake a stick at. Right, original dancing plant toy. Oh my gosh, here's the flower, rockin' flowers. No, that's not it. Although I have one of those. <laughs> not the dancing sunflower. I have those. They're sun powered. They're great. The rockin' flowers. Yes. Rockin' flowers. Like rock and roll. <laughs> Hey Google, 
When were rockin' flowers invented? No. <laughs> Vintage rockin' flowers to Cara 1988 dancing flower. Oh, it was the 80s. You just knew it. That's fine, Google, don't worry about it. You're fine, shh, you're fine. <laughs> Vintage, oh my gosh, I have one of these, I swear. It's so weird, the type of things that stick with you. <laughs> See, that would be a good thing to, to bring back, but Guardians of the Galaxy already did it, so I feel like it's done. I think you just get a Groot. Uh, dancing baby group as a toy now. Yeah, you just get the potted dancing. You can get different ones. You can get like a bobblehead version. Uh, all sorts of different stuff. <laughs> also, the alien plants are carnivorous. Of course they are. <laughs> More themes than you can shake a dousing rod at. Speaking of which, dousing rod board game I mean, you're on wide today with our ideas <laughs> I feel if you made a dancing a dousing rod board game you'd have to make it you'd have to call it something really obnoxious like douse Dousing is a type of divination employed in an attempt to locate groundwater. Douse. The game. <laughs> Not that that's really that obnoxious of a name. I shouldn't say obnoxious name either. I feel like there's definitely games where I just see the name or hear the name and almost cringe a little bit because I'm like, doesn't, what is that? What is it about? Just especially the shorter one word names or just the name of the city or something like that doesn't tell me what, what sort of a game that is. Is it the name like uh, Arch Ravelry, right? Where it's a, it's a game about knitting and you're, you're competing. I get a little bit of a feel what the game is about. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of games just like, what, what is that? Need like Googleable? If I just Google Douse, is this game gonna come up? Anyways, Douse board game. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, Dousing Rods Utopia Engine. Okay. Utopia Engine, what is this, 2010? What is, like, what is Utopia Engine as a game? Utopia, I'm not looking at the site. Utopia Engine is a game about building a spaceship to escape from a destroyed Earth. Hmm. It's a free print and play dice game for one player. It's got a lot of reviews. Play an old artificer attempting to reconstruct the Utopia Engine, a fabled device from the distant past. Sounds like a pretty cool game. Free dice game for one player. Hmm. So it has a dousing rod, but I think you'd make a fun game that was all about dousing. You just make a fun tile flipping game, right? You just have your grid tiles. Uh, just have some rocks on it. I feel like it looks a little bit like my rocks in the garden. Ooh, maybe dousing on Mars? That'd be fun. Everyone loves Mars games. Space game. Obviously, if these are going to be not all identical tiles, you couldn't just put the water on the back of them because then you'd be able to memorize multiple plays of the game. 
what if, it, what if that was fine, right? Maybe this is a mass game or just flip it over. Hey, does it have water or not? I win. Uh, you have your little dousing rod. Ooh, maybe the dousing rod is a component where you can actually pick up the tiles. That would be cool. Maybe it has a magnet in it or something? <laughs> that would be crazy. It's composed of square tiles that look like dirt. Dousing on Mars. Mars doused. Dousing the red planet. Red planet dousing. Is it pronounced dousing? I don't even know. I don't think I've heard anyone say that before. What if it was like doozing? Also, doesn't to douse also just mean to dump water on someone? But maybe that's spelled with a U. Like to douse the flames? Yeah, that is spelled with a U. They're so close though. Okay, this look like dirt. Either the other side as water, or there are other tiles underneath. How do you set that up though? Not sure. Uh, some tiles have different effects. Rearranging tiles. Producing water? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. You like dig in the spot and you don't find water, but it affects the water all around you. Dig in one spot. Thematically. Uh, it affects the water all around you. Uh, don't want to forget the tool idea. Uh, your dousing rod has a really cool plastic dousing rod component. I don't know why I'm so excited about really fun components today. Maybe because I played Scythe earlier. Uh, also, helps you flip over the tiles more easily. Maybe with a magnet. Probably not, but I don't know. I played a game with the magnets in it before. A fishing game. It was really fun. Or there are holes in the tile, and it's in, on a raised tray, so you can kind of get in there. Yeah, you could probably do it. <laughs> it's so weird. I'm just I'm thinking about graphic design wise how to make it look like a variegated plot of earth without giving away too much information I have an idea if you had five or six types of tiles and each one had even dis distribution of the things on the backs um <laughs> then that would be better I just think it would be boring. I'm going way into the weeds right here and I realize it and I'm just gonna keep digging myself down into this rabbit hole. I feel like it would be boring if each of the tiles had the same back, right? But then if there was the the two rock tile, for example, there was 10 tiles that look like this and only one of them has water on the back. And that one's been flipped over, then you wouldn't go for uh, that pattern anymore. Because you're like, no, oh, only one of those has water, and you'd overthink it. And maybe that's just me, just getting way too overthinky and obsessed. It's probably, especially for prototyping purposes, just put the dirt on there. It doesn't matter.
first rule of game design, maybe not the first rule, important rule of game design, don't get too caught up in little details such as making sure with the patterns of the tiles are going to be, because maybe it doesn't even turn out to be a fun game. If it's not a fun game, there's no point in obsessing over these things because it will never matter. You know what it says? My family went to a dousing gathering when I was in high school. How are you so cool? Just literally all the stories you have, everything you do, just sounds like the most fun and amazing thing. Like the going to the falconry and this dousing thing and the counting the deer corpses or something. Rather than the whole day muttering about crackpots and snake oil and whatnot. Every time their magic sticks didn't work, the stick wielder would say, it didn't work because there's an unbeliever here. My dad would give us the eye and tell us to stop it. <laughs> That's a great story. I love that. Guessing the name Arch Ravelry came before the design. Yeah. I mean, you can also be too clever with names. Uh, and then we died. Used to be Confabirasa. Although sometimes I tell people about that and they wish it was still called Confabirasa. But, yeah. And then we died. That's you tell the game it's part of the description of the game you know i love how uh, abandon all artichokes right it's very you know what that game's about getting rid of the artichokes is that morris dancers there because having a pile of dousers in one place wasn't oddball enough what the heck is a morris dancer i don't even know huh huh english Folk dance usually accompanied by music it's based on rhythmic stepping and execution of choreographed figures. Huh. I'm gonna have to watch that video. That sounds fun. <laughs> what pagan cult was that? <laughs> Dousing on Mars. Cool. Dousing on Mars. Ship it. It's great. Everyone's a fan. Backwoods, New England, anything. It's an isolated location. Often the woods sounds very cult like. Kind of place where a nice wholesome family goes to get axe murdered. Mm -hmm. I would be wor worried about axe murdery <laughs> and sacrifice to bring back the old gods. Yeah. Although I will say, uh, also having lived in the backwoods of New England, because I think Maine is in New England, I went to many things and places that were weird and sketchy like that. When you grow up with it, you. At least for me, I didn't think too much about it. Just like, hey, we're gonna go to the, we're gonna just go walk into the woods with the bears and chop down our Christmas tree. I spent a lot of time when I was a kid by myself in the woods. Hmm. Maybe do the Ouija board thing for the dowsing. Basically, the same principle. Look up ring on a string baby gender test. Oh, shoot. Oh, uh, Senior Bob, I get to say that. Now, I don't know if it was... I was hanging out with my friend Javion today and doing some brainstorming for some games that we're working on. I don't know if that's what it is. Just, like, the ideas just keep coming. I can't stop. Because now you say the baby gender test. Because that would be a thing, uh, I think, culturally. I don't know what it's like. So we'd have to do some research about that. I don't know how many of the traditions, uh, with the cultural roots of a lot of the traditions are, but I know never having been to a baby shower myself. I think. I don't think I've been to a baby shower. Have I been to a baby shower? I don't think I've been to a baby shower. Maybe one. I forget. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Because <laughs> uh, I've heard terrifying things about them. I'm very scared of this baby shower situation. Because what I've seen in YouTube and movies is very scary. Uh, <laughs> determining your baby's gender working. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is probably not politically correct at all. I don't know if there's a appropriate way to do this. It's like, how many methods are there for determining a baby gender? <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna I'm googling this stuff. Google is just going to have this in for determining baby eye color. Is that after they're born or before they're born? Hmm. 
<laughs> Sorry. I'm just looking at the Google autocomplete. It's like, are people trying to figure out what color their eyes will be before they're born? It seems excessive. <laughs> okay, I love that the first one that comes up is is determined by having an ultrasound. Oh god, how to tell if you're having a boy or a girl on the Today Show? Genetic blood test. Okay, great. Okay, fetal heart rate predictor. The height of your bump, the shape of your bump, the wedding. Okay, this is a great wedding prediction stuff. I'm not wedding. Sorry, wedding ring on a string trick. <laughs> Predict whether you'll get married. He loves me. He loves me not. Morning sickness madness. Mayan gender prediction. Look at your hands. What? Oh my gosh, there's a lot of weird stuff on here. The oh, the, ba the baby hype thing. I don't know. It's scary. It scares me. I have to think. What I've read, the way it swings is controlled subliminally. Could be used as a dousing mechanic in a game. Ooh, I like that. Man. <laughs> of all the game themes that we're talking about and thinking of, Separate from cat games, because cat games are always going to be number one. Cat games are always going to win if we're having a competition of which game ideas are most exciting to me. Uh, shoot, cat games, plant growing games, recipe cooking games, uh, anything divination, uh, witchcrafty. Like divination with a dowsing, with a ring, Ouija board. I'd love to make a game that taps into that esoteric. So I've never done a Ouija board before. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Well, it works because the spirits are talking to you. Uh, whether the spirits talk to you or not, mechanically, I've heard somebody just pushes it or just everybody pushing it on the same time and just ends up going somewhere uh, but that feeling because I think I've done the thing as a kid like light as a feather stiff as a board I don't think it worked but those kinds of things especially when you're a kid the magic the esoteric yeah you're a cat very good helper so that feeling that feeling of surprise and suspense yeah i hear you i acknowledge you uh, when you're fooled by a magic trick i love magic tricks and i love not knowing how they work when someone tricks me with a slate of hand I'm like ah oh, that's so cool and you feel i don't know just a uh, a moment of feeling like, hey, maybe magic is real, or less superstitious than that, but more along the lines of, hey, I thought the world worked one way. And now I've seen evidence to the contrary. And I'm trying to process that. <laughs> I think it's a little bit of the feeling that people get when they play And Then We Died. You're putting the cards down, making a word, telling the story. It all tends to be fairly organic. And then you get to the last card, you play it, and then and that's how we died. And you kind of sit back and say, like, huh. Like, I didn't think that I could tell a story and we just told a really cool story about uh, rats being rats on a sinking ship and escaping in a boat and then there was a tornado uh, and just the fact that the individual words build together to make this big complete whole story this feeling of awakening or discovery so those are some of the things that I like to embody and engender in game design. <laughs> Senior Robin wasn't necessarily trying to get you excited about predicting baby gender. Oh gosh. 
I don't, I don't know if I could actually make that game. This is a freebie. If anybody wants to make a game about predicting baby gender, well, okay. If I was to make this game, it wouldn't be a serious. <laughs> wouldn't be a serious take on the subject. It might be some people who do take this stuff seriously might not appreciate it. You could be, I mean, you do some funny stuff with it, like competing to use the most methods to figure out baby's gender or different methods have different predictions, reconciling that. Hmm. hmm. I guess. It, I, um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny too because you know discussions of gender and being non-binary and trans people and what gender are you like. There's a lot that goes into that. Thinking of more serious and why doing a gender reveal thing isn't necessarily the best thing. Um, for you know, children, gender assignment at birth, right? The children push one way or another. If there's issues with the genitals, you know, be like, well, you're a boy now because we're just gonna arbitrarily make that decision and fix you, right? Um, yeah. Downer, man. <laughs> that's, that's what my game's gonna be. It's gonna be about determining your baby's gender and at the end it'll be like, oh hey, you know, that's you're not in charge of what their gender is. So you might be able to figure out what their, or just like, hey, you can take an, an ultrasound to figure out what their genitals are, but what their gender is gonna be is not up to you. Anyways, oh, sidebar. Came out just witchy cat gardeners, just, I can't even read the rest of this. They're like, this is just, but this is my magnum opus, right? This is going to be my, uh, this is going to be the game that I make one day, bringing together all of my interests. Witchy cat gardeners who harvest their crops to cook up dishes that do magic to the people who eat them. Yeah, that is, that's my magnum, my magnum opus. You know, all the pieces coming together. Cat gardeners, what do you think? Gonna be a gardener? You're gone now. <laughs> Senior Bob, I planted these Brussels sprouts with a coin, so eating them will make you rich. Hmm. I mean, that's fun. Uh, coming back around to luck, predictions, divination, and then quackery. Man, he's like, I love Quacks of Quedlinburg. It's a great game. I don't feel like it really leans enough into the quackery theme, though. I'll have to do some research to see if there's other quackery games. It's just a, such a rich snake oil sa salesman. I'm selling snake oil in this whole... Like, there's just so much mechanically you can do with bluffing, deception... Maybe there is magic. No, maybe it's not. Maybe some people do have magic in this world. And so um, maybe it isn't a bluff. Maybe they really can cure your uh, warts or your fear of heights or whatever it is. <laughs> Man, we must have seven or eight game ideas here, more if we break them down. Just, it's beautiful. You have to figure out if you're getting the real deal. Or if you're being tricked. great crop of ideas today get it crop because it's like it's like gardening I'm talking about gardening <laughs> thought you'd enjoy that great crop of ideas today uh, lots of fun stuff here Jeez, what the f 
food magic instant pot. I'm sorry we didn't get too much into the instant pot, like actual cooking recipe stuff. So I think there's a wealth of games just from there. Or Star Trek rep uh, food replication game, we didn't get into that. The marijuana delivery service, didn't get into that. So many avenues we didn't go down. Uh, we did talk a little bit about <laughs> uh, magical food as witches, witches cooking ingredients using secret ingredient language, uh, flowers having a language, building that, uh, playing around with the tussy mussy but building off of the flower language and playing around with that. Uh, Stuff bringing luck, luck collection is a board game mechanic. <laughs> Herding cats, a board game, jousting rod, board game. <laughs> Determining your baby's gender, board game. And then divination and quackery. All sorts of fun stuff today. Uh, so, if there's anything else, any last minute ideas anyone wants to share, speak now or forever hold your peace. Because that's it forever for game design. No, 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 just don't, don't freak out. <laughs> just messing with you. It's a trick. Uh, but yeah, I'm getting ready to pack up shop. Pack up my quack shop here. Throw all my snake oils onto the wagon. Hightail it out of here. What was the Disney movie that had that? I feel like it was Pete's Dragon. Was it Pete's Dragon? I think I have to watch that movie again. It's been a long, long time. Uh, but there was, I remember there was a snake oil salesman. That was one of the first memories I have of kind of knowing what that was and what that's about. And that was how I was fixated in my memories. Hope y'all enjoyed the stream. As always, if anything here you see, enjoy, inspires you, feel free to run with it. Uh, <laughs> man, I was gonna say, I haven't taken these ideas and run with them. I just have so many ideas that I'm working on. Cause even uh, games I'm working on with Javion, just ideas I've had in my backlog going back a long time. Each week coming up with three, five, seven or more ideas. Like I have probably a hundred or more game design ideas that I could potentially be working on. Oh, there's just so much. How do I get it all done in time? Uh, but I like to, I like coming up with lots of different ideas because then when I do sit down to work on a new project, I'll have a lot to draw from and really be able to dig into something that I'm excited about and inspired by. So I definitely recommend this to you as well to take some time, write up some ideas, maybe talk it over with friends because it can be a great way to uh, find that idea that's really unique and has something to it. Because I think that's really what it takes in this day and age for if you want to succeed is kind of digging under the surface and finding some ideas that haven't been done yet or haven't been done in a really unique way. I think there's a nigh infinite amount of space for cool new game concepts that really lean into their theme. Uh, something dowsing rods, you take the rod, you flip it over, see if the water is in there. It's a very visceral uh, sort of idea. There's a lot of different directions it can go in. It could be easier, it could be more complex. Obviously, you need to build it out, test it, uh, but it's a good starting point. It's got a good message. It's something that I can explain to someone fairly easily. If they know what dousing is, do people even know what do kids these days know what dousing is? I feel like that was a, an old timey thing that someone might not understand. And if you try to explain dousing to someone who doesn't understand dousing, it's like, oh, people walk around with sticks and they find water underground because the stick points down or something. You're like, yeah, that's Sounds like a real thing. Anyway, that can be a fun idea. Or hurting cats, right? People know what hurting cats means. Like, cats, you can't get them all going in one direction. Uh, so that's one. It's like, hey, 
I'm trying to get the crafts to do a certain thing. You're trying to stop me from doing it. It's a good, it's an easy pitch. Right, I like games where the pitch of it is easy to say and remember, as opposed to a pitch for a game where you might say, yeah, well, you're planting a lot of different plants and it takes a while for the plants to grow and eventually you have to harvest them. And once you harvest them, you're going to uh, put them, you're gonna hire the trucks and you're gonna put them in the trucks and deliver it and there's certain requirements or just like a plant harvesting game. Uh, I think a lot of the simpler themes, you're like, oh, well, you're delivering goods to the castle. Uh, like that's a theme that has been done before. Not that you can't do a delivering goods to the castle game, but you need to be able to describe it to me in a way that is exciting and unique and inspiring. <laughs> Senior Bob says, series finale. Man, I should do seasons, right? Make a note of that. Seasons, themes. I've been thinking that about that uh, a little bit. I've been pretty happy with how the show is going. I've been enjoying myself. I felt very inspired. Hope you all have been enjoying yourselves and feeling inspired as well. Thinking about ways to make it um, a little more broadly appealing, yet more people excited about the show, potentially work in not only doing the ideas, but on live on stream, getting them into card formats, maybe even doing like a little demonstration of how the game works. Because I think that's the kind of thing that people ex be excited about, watching me sit here, uh, sit here watching me cut out the cards, that kind of thing. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential different directions to go with it. Now that I'm doing the KonMari method and opening up some space here, hopefully have some more fun stuff in the future. But that's it. We've reached our time. Six o'clock. This cat. Gotta take care of him. Snuggle him. Cuddle punish him for bumping up against my elbow. You want to be on TV? As soon as I get out of the chair and try and grab him, and he's gonna run away because he does not, he does not want to be on TV. Thanks so much for joining me. I am here every Tuesday, pretty much 4 p.m. PST. I also have a stream on Thursdays at 6 p.m. PST. If you want to hang out, watch Phil and I play some Magic. Usually do a little bit of limited. Uh, we're doing drafts now on Magic Arena, so it's fun. We play games, talk about Magic, and also just hang out so it's fun come out and hang out with us feel free to follow uh subscribe if you have amazon prime you get free subscription to a channel so that's pretty cool fun and yeah if there's anything you want to see hit me up here or on twitter at mlarkins and yeah love hearing from you it's gonna be it for now so i'm gonna log off but i'll see you again next week <laughs>